So Alistair, you've been a Rotarian since the early 80s. What led you to become a Rotarian? I became a Rotarian in the early 80s. Now, Cayman in the early 80s was a different society than what it is now. It was the expat community was much smaller. In fact, the whole community was much smaller. There wasn't nearly as much to do. And I'd heard about the Rotary Club. A lot of my friends were members. And I got dragged along to a Rotary meeting at the Royal Palms. We had a few drinks after the meeting. And where I went the following week and we had a few drinks after the meeting. And then we went off to play golf. And I thought this is a wonderful way to spend a, to spend a Thursday lunch and a Thursday afternoon. And the following week, somebody said to me, would you like to become a Rotarian? And I said, well, sounds like a good idea. What's it all about? They said, well, it's a service club. We help people in the community and we meet every Thursday and, and we enjoy ourselves. We have great fellowship and you meet lots of people. And the following week, I was asked to fill in a form and sign it. And the week after, I was inducted. Now, that was in the early days, not like nowadays, where it could take three or four months to go through orientation and training and what is the club and what is the organization. And it was just a different society, different community, different way of joining the club in those days. It was a great way to meet people, great way to enjoy fellowship in a community that was very, very much smaller. It wasn't until some time later that I realized what an incredible organization it was and what great work it did. And um, I got more heavily involved as the years went by. Once you became a Rotarian, what was your motivation to start a new club? You were the initial president of the Sunrise Club in 2002. I became president in of the Grand Cayman Club in 1996-97 and I became a Rotarian I think 83-84 so I'd been in the club for quite a while but I'd spent eight, nine, ten years of being on the board. I'd done directorships for all the avenues of service. I'd been sergeant at arms for four consecutive years. I'd uh, done fundraising, community service, international service, club service, um, and got very, very heavily involved. I never did secretary or treasurer, uh, but because I was so involved in the club, I, was, I then made the ladder into vice president, president-elect, and president of Grand Cayman. We went through some growing pains, uh, at least I went through some gr growing pains with the club because I was very, very ill and the year that I was president, it was a bit of a struggle. Uh, but the club, it, it's a wonderful club. The Grand Cayman Club is, is in the mother club and it's an incredible club and has done some incredible work on this island. Why did Sunrise start? I just felt that there were a lot of people in the community here that could be good Rotarians who weren't prepared to take two or three hours out on a Thursday lunch who weren't prepared to leave their families on a Tuesday evening to visit the other two clubs. And there was a huge number of um, young professionals and government employees, different types of people who would not join the other clubs, but who would be terrific Rotarians. So I canvassed a few and they said, yeah, yeah, we would be interested. So I got a group of three or four friends together and we decided that a breakfast club was probably the best opportunity for people as an alternative. Now we were pilloried by the other two clubs because they thought that we were going to dilute their membership. But in fact, I think only two, maybe three at the very most left the other two clubs to join Sunrise. And we were able to gather together 34, I think, charter members. Uh, people who had been Rotarians before, people who were new Rotarians, but nobody from the other club as so or the other clubs as such. And one of the great achievements we did that year was that we grew from 34 to 68 in the year. Uh, and it showed that the Breakfast Club was meaningful and had a place in this community and in this society. It was a wonderful experience. And I got inveigled into being the first president for my sins. In, in the 80s, with, with less resources and people, what is your greatest challenge starting a new club? I think the greatest, the greatest challenge in starting a new club is the fact that you're starting from scratch. You just don't know how many members you'll start with or how many you'll finish up with. You have no program. You have no money. You don't have a reputation. You don't have a track record. And you have to establish everything from day one and from first, pr first principles. 
And I was very lucky because I had a very, very good board, a very, very good secretary. Jeff Matthews was my secretary. And you can imagine that uh, you know, with Jeff as secretary, things were just awesome. It was beautifully organized and ministered. Linda Redfern was my treasurer. She was a, a, a senior manager with Deloitte's and she did a fantastic job of bookkeeping. And the board of directors had a lot of experience with Gordon Hewitt and Chris Bowring and a number of other people who had been, been notarian. So although it was a challenge, it's a challenge to us all and we met the challenge and we did some, some terrific programs. We did programs offshore and onshore. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience and a wonderful experience having been president of another club before to be able to correct some of the errors that I made the first time round, I was able to correct them second time round. Throughout your rotary life to date, what was your biggest accomplishment? The greatest accomplishment, I think, without any question, uh, it was a great accomplishment to be a president of the Grand Cayman Club. It was an even greater accom accomplishment to be president of the Sunrise Club to be president of two clubs, but I think my greatest accomplishment, any question at all, was being district governor uh, of 7020 with 10 countries over in those days 14 islands and re representing Sunrise, new club with its first d district governor. And it was a year in my life that I will never forget. It was a challenging year. It had times of happiness, joy, fun and laughter. It had times of incredible sadness, but the fellowship was great, the projects were great, meeting the people was great, the travel was great. Everything was positive about that whole year. And if anybody gets an opportunity to be a district governor, you've got to get out and take it and grab it because you'll never get an opportunity like it again.